What happens when your spouse comes to you and says that he or she doesn't believe the church anymore? Next on the Ex-Mormon Files. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl. I appreciate you spending some time with us. And last time we got to meet Ben Lundgren, and today we get to meet his lovely wife, Corey. Thanks for coming down again all the way from, I keep saying Smithfield, but is it Richmond? Richmond. Yep. Richmond. Are they close? They are. Oh, okay. How, real Seven close. miles. I grew oh. up in Smithfield, and then I moved to Richmond. So. Oh, I see. So, <laughs> but very tight community mm -hmm. and... Uh, very LDS. And, Very LDS. And seven miles from Idaho, we understand. Yep. And, <laughs> and you have four children. We learned about those kids, or Correct. at least heard that you had four, and mm -hmm. that's neat. Now, you were you also born and raised up there in I that was. area? Yep, I was born and raised in Smithfield. Okay. And, and went to school there? Yep, I went to school at Skyview. Okay. And then met Ben just my first year of Skyview. Okay. So... And yes, you were young, weren't you? Yes, I was, was 15. Oh, and he was a senior or something? <laughs> he had just graduated. Oh. Mom and Dad probably weren't too happy with that, uh, were they? Um, no, not really, but oh. that's all right. <laughs> now, were you raised again in the church and you went to all the time? And so I was, like that? I was raised in the church. My mom was a single mom, so oh. she worked most Sundays. Oh, he mentioned that. Yeah. So it was... Go to church if you want to go to church or go with your friends. You can go with your grandparents. Okay. So it, if I wanted to go, I went. And I guess the question is, do you, did you believe the church was true at that young age? Um, I thought it was true, and I kind of just followed what everyone else, like what we all know. And, and Grandma was... And Grandma was there to support me, and she, active, she had right? a very strong testimony of the church. Yeah. Now, I think I heard you say that you were like a fifth-generation Mormon. That is did, correct. Did your family settle up there? They did, yep. Oh, okay. From Brigham Young? Is, do you know? Yes, or Brigham Young. Sent them up there? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty country, I guess. And it is. So, um, did you take seminary? And I did. I took early morning seminary. Oh. So, it was my choice to go to school at 6.30 for seminary. Oh, gosh. And <laughs> then I had all day for other school activities. Yeah, yeah. Rather than release time during the day, which yep. we we do here in Utah, I guess. So. Yeah. Well, okay. So you get go, kind of go through high school, and now are you dating a lot with with Ben during this time? Mm -hmm. You're yep, just... I'm dating Ben all okay. through high school. Okay, dances. And yep, that. he came back to took me to all the dances I wanted to go to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and so then. Uh, now, are you still in school when he decides to go on a mission? I am. I'm a yeah. sophomore in high school. When? Oh, okay. And so, were you excited about that? Are you glad? And I was excited for him. I knew that's what he need, what he was supposed to do. Yeah. That's what you're supposed to do at that age: serve a mission. And I would still be in high school when he got home from his mission, so I wasn't going to be. Any, I wasn't going anywhere. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and did you sense at all that he was struggling with the? With that decision, uh -huh. or did that more come at the it came MTC to, it came, for him? I knew he wanted, didn't want to go 100%, but he, I think he thought that maybe once he got there, it would be a better thing. Yeah. And maybe that's just what I was hoping that he thought. <laughs> yeah, that he'd, okay. So he gets home, and, and then you, do you finish school with, uh, I mean, you get through school mm -hmm. before you get married, I guess? Right, and, yep. Okay. So we got married a year after I graduated high school. Okay. So. And you're just living there, and you're both going to church mm -hmm. at this point? And we are. Yeah. Anything? So we weren't too active when we first got married. We didn't go every Sunday. We went every once in a while. Yeah. But then after our first son was born, which was a year after we were married, um, the doctors told us for all medical reasons he shouldn't be alive. So we're like, well, Pretty special kid. Then, then this, <laughs> I guess the priest of blessings help. God helped us. Like, we need to do something. We need to get our butt back in gear and get to church. <laughs> so and that's what we did. Now, do you talk him into it? Did he talk you into we, it? You we talked together about together? it until we decided that's what we needed to do. We needed to, since we had help saving him, yeah. saving our son, that we needed to get... Oh, that's neat. Back to church. That's a great story. So that's what we did. Yeah. Now, did you feel the same um, 
feelings that, that Ben had as he went and tried to get back into it? Did you feel like? Um, I think. Would you, I guess I'm putting words in your mouth, but are you? Do you feel like you had a stronger urge or testimony than he did about? Pursuing? I felt like I. I felt like that's where I needed to be. I needed to go. I needed to be at the church because that's what. Yeah. With all those priesthood blessings, that's what saved our son's life. Is what we thought. Okay. How much do you think you know about knew about the church then? Not very much at all. Now you taken seminary. I had but, taken seminary. But that's kind of. Yeah, we knew, I knew of Joseph Smith, and then the Book knew, of Mormon. You knew his story. I knew his story. Had you read the Book of Mormon? Um, not the whole thing. Okay. But I had read bits and pieces. <laughs> The Bible? You read no. much of it? Oh. No. No Bible. Doctrine and Covenants? Yes, I read the Doctrine and Covenants. Pearl of Great Price? Yes. Okay. I think I read so, those ones because they were easier to understand. Yeah. A little more English <laughs> uh -huh. uh, relatable. <laughs> yep. And the Pearl of Great Price is short. So You're that's perfect. A, yeah. <laughs> Our kind of book. Huh? Yes. So it's just funny what we, you know, I remember as a young person, thinking of, of how much I thought the church was true and how little I really knew about it. I mean, I just, like you say, kind of followed the teachings of everybody else and what everybody else was saying. And did you bear, ever bear your testimony? And I only bore my testimony the day we blessed our children. Oh. But that's it. Um, yeah, the, each of the, each time that mm -hmm. each time. four children were yep. blessed. Well, good for you. <laughs> and then I never, like, even at girls' camp, I never did it. Didn't. I just didn't feel comfortable to get up in front of everybody and do it. Yeah. So. Even with the pressure yep. there. Huh? Even with the pressure, I. And the bishop sitting across the <laughs> fire, and you still didn't get up. Nope, I did not. Boy, I am proud of you. <laughs> That's a lot of pressure, I know. Uh, okay, so. Just kind of, and Ben kind of indicated that it was several years there that you kind of went so kind of inactive and then active. And, right, so we you know. were. Now you do go through the temple. We did. We went through our, the temple after our second child was born, a year after she was born. So we'd been married for four years. And then we was went that through the, the Logan temple. temple? It was, yep. Was what would you think of that? It was different. Yeah. It was strange. I, I felt uncomfortable. Did you? I only ever went to get my endowments out, and then when we got sealed, never went back. It's interesting that it, and I, I know many feel that way, and you'd think that that being the pinnacle of our church, whatever I'm trying to say, is that I mean, that's what we all work for, and that's our goal, and yet it, it, it leaves us kind of cold. Mm -hmm. You'd think that people would want, more people would want to go back and, and spend their hours at the temple once they get the chance, right? Right. What, what was it about it that... I just didn't feel the peace. I didn't feel the spirit that I thought I should feel. Mm -hmm. I just, I didn't feel comfortable. Yeah. And even in the celestial room, when you sit there, you're supposed to feel the peace and the comfort, and it wasn't there for me. I don't know what it was. I just felt like yeah. this is crazy. This is strange. I wonder how many people really admit to that, even <laughs> people that go back later on and keep going back, but just say, you know, this is strange, but I, I got over it. <laughs> Did you ever go into a, like a baptism for the dead font? I did as had, the youth. Yeah. Yeah. What, that was creepy to me. It was, that was very creepy. And now I don't know if you'd ever did that in the Salt Lake Temple, but I did not. It's just cold and marbly, and it's just it's not warm and fuzzy at all. Mm -hmm. And now that I think about it, dealing with dead people, <laughs> it's really not the best thing going, you know. No. And I think maybe that's part of what pulls people away. I, the temple was. I mean, I went through it, and I prayed for the people that I was going through for, and tried to be, you know, uh, uh, obedient with it. But it just, it just for some reason, it's not a highlight to me. And I always yeah. felt funny about Jesus that he was just kind of this errand boy that mm -hmm. kind of did stuff. And right. <laughs> <laughs> so well, at least you go through and uh, and. Uh, have that experience and and so now you feel like you've got your family for time yeah. and all eternity and that you'll be together now did polygamy ever play into your thinking no 
No. Did you ever think you were going to have to share band with anybody? I sure hope not, ever. <laughs> <laughs> but you knew that that was church doctrine. Yes, I did know that. Yeah. I don't think he'd want another wife, though. He did. I think I'm tough he enough. Left <laughs> plenty <laughs> enough for him. For him huh? yes. So what happens? Uh, does he come to you at some point? or, or He just quit going to church, and I would talk to him like, hey, why, why aren't you going to church? And he's like, I'm, I'm just not feeling it. And then I felt like I needed to keep taking the kids to church because they needed to learn about Jesus and they needed God in their lives. Okay. So I would ask him every Sunday, are you coming to church? It usually would turn into some sort of argument. I would leave the house upset, take the kids to church. Oh, <laughs> did that happen for quite a while? It did. It happened. And then I just quit asking. I figured if he was ready to go to church, he would get up and come with me and the kids and we would yeah. we'd go together as a family. If not, me and the kids will go and we'll... Do what we're supposed to do. Did you feel like this was jeopardizing your temple or your uh, eternal marriage? Or um, temple marriage? I don't think I felt like like a divorce would happen or anything. I just no. didn't know what was going to happen. Yeah. I just kept thinking he'll realize what he's missing. He'll yeah, come around. Come around. Yep. Yeah. But little did I know. <laughs> okay. So tell us the. Tell us the real story here um, now, what happens. So he just approached me one day and was said, I need you to start looking into stuff. I need you to do some research. And I'm like, research about what? And he goes, research about the church. And I was like, okay, well, tell me where to start looking. So he talked to me about reading the CES letter. And I was like, I'll read that when I have time. I don't have time to read that big thing right now. It's like 87 pages it's or something. Isn't way it? long. Yeah. So I started talking to some people at work and like, hey, my husband wants me to read this letter. And I had a, one of my coworkers said, you should read it. I just got done reading it. Was she LDS? It was a guy and he was LDS and oh, he no. was on the verge of going out too. So <laughs> I, I came back to Ben, we discussed it. I asked, asked questions and we just had, we stayed up till three, four in the morning some days and not realizing what time it was about discussing discussing what we were feeling and why we were thinking this way and what we were going to do next. I remember him saying to me that you actually went through the gospel essays. Mm -hmm. Did you start reading those? I, I did not. But he did? He did. Okay. I thought you guys shared or were talking about those or reading them, but he, he did, but you didn't. No, okay. I did not. I don't think most LDS even know about them. Yeah. Yeah, and certainly haven't read them. Right. But, yeah. yeah, so we would just discuss different topics about how it's proven to not be true. Yeah. So, and there was days we would go to work ne the next day dragging because we only got an hour of sleep. We're like, oh, it's <laughs> 4 o'clock. We probably should go to sleep for a minute. At least catch a couple of <laughs> shut eyes. So did you start seeing then things differently? I mean, I called this the bad news, of course. Right. The, the negative things about the church, the polyandry and the book of Abraham and mm -hmm. all those kinds of bad news things. Were you thinking at all Jesus at this point or were you understanding that maybe there's another I, gospel out there that... I didn't know what I was thinking. I just felt like I was lost. I didn't know where to turn. I didn't know who to go to. I just... You can't I was feeling lost. You can hardly talk to people, right? Yeah, you can't talk to people. Very. Yeah. You have to figure out who they are before you can talk to them. So did, yeah, yeah. And you don't even know what you're looking at, right? Or where you're at. Did you ever talk to your folks or your? So I did not. Bishop or mm -mm. okay. Nope. You kind of let Ben drive that mm -hmm. train. It was a, a it bit. was a great thing for him to do. <laughs> <laughs> then he'd come back and talk to you, yeah. I guess. So what kind of happened? I mean, you start learning more and more and yeah, so we questioning started, and... Yeah, and we figured it, so we figured it was a perfect time because in the summer we go camping all the time. So how to tell the kids, hey, we're not going to go to church anymore. This was perfect. We're like, hey, we're going to be camping every Sunday, so we will miss church. So the kids weren't questioning, like, what was going on, what was happening. And what were their ages at this point? Um, 10, 9, 5, and 4. And this is just recent, mm -hmm. right? Just like last year or yep. so. Last yeah. year. Did they did they say no we want to go to church or um or was it they they I we were asking they, if we were going to church and I just said, oh, No, we're not we're not gonna go to church today, we're just okay. we'll wait. Okay. And then So at what point then do you decide or he decides that you're 
maybe ought to go to a Christian church? Um, well, we knew that we needed God in our life. We knew there was a God. We knew we needed him in our life and we needed Jesus. Well, I'm, glad, I'm glad to hear that because not everybody that leaves the church, they don't want to get burned twice, so to speak, right. or whatever. And so they kind of give up on God and Jesus. And yeah, no, we knew we well, knew there's God and we knew our kids needed that. Good so we you. needed to find something. Okay. And then I think Ben shared with the colleague that he ran into and invited yeah. us to a church. Yeah. Had you listened to any of these podcasts? I had listened to too? one podcast that Ben suggested I listen to, and yeah. I was like, hey, I like it. They talk about Jesus. We, they talk about Jesus. We did learn about Jesus. <laughs> did you think that was new for you? I did. To hear about Jesus? Yeah, because I've never, in the LDS church, I don't, we talked about Jesus on Christmas and Easter, and that's it. Yeah. If, if. If that. Yeah. <laughs> and like, I thought Ben's point was really good. Uh, it's Jesus is kind of around our sacrament mm -hmm. moment. That's it. You know, and after that, it's kind of a free for all of topics. Mm -hmm. It's not very much about Jesus. That's I not. never really put it in that perspective, but that's true. Yes. Yeah. Because anyway, so uh, you decide to f go to this church and. We go to the church and. What did you think? First we, time you went. We got all ready for church. My kids dressed up like you do when you go to the LDS church, <laughs> dressed to the max. And we walked in and we're like, whoa, we are way overdressed. <laughs> and Was Ben in shirt and tie? No, he was just in a polo oh, shirt. Okay, so. But then there's coffee going and we're like, coffee? Who has coffee at church? <laughs> and we went in and that first week during worship, I have never cried so much in my life. Me too. The spirit, holy cow, hit me hard. Yeah. I have, and the, I still cry almost every Sunday the during worship. The words up on the screen. Oh, amazing. Isn't it? It's amazing. Yeah. And the worship. And the, the, yeah, it's just. And there's such a freedom. Like there is. Like Ben said, people are there because they want to be there. They're, oh, yes. Nobody's expecting them to be there or mm -hmm. forcing them to be there. Right. And they praise. Do they raise their hands? We, yep, raise our, they raise their hands and yeah. clap to that music and say amen, hallelujah, <laughs> whatever you want to say. So different. <laughs> it is, and it's it's amazing. But it's real worship. It is. And and we're putting Jesus uh, at the focal point, mm -hmm. and that just isn't true of of our Mormon services or. Mormon Anything service. I experienced in Mormonism, right. Jesus was not, even in the temple, like I said, he just isn't, it's just not very important. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the deal is, but it's more about us, I guess, in the church, isn't it? What it is. we can do and what we have to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, so you kept going. Yep, we go faithfully every Sunday, and I think we've missed one or two Sundays <laughs> in a year. And I like Ben's story about going when your family was having the Christmas party. Yes, he did do that. <laughs> now, did you have a born-again moment or a, a time when you thought, okay, I mean, when your mind just kind of went, okay, I'm over here now, not over here? Um, what was that moment like? I think just like during worship, I've never felt the spirits, like the Holy Spirit so strong. Okay. And I think that time it was like, holy cow, Jesus wants you. He needs you in your kingdom. Like, you are here and you can make this happen. Yeah, and he loves you. Oh, he loves me for who I am and what I'm doing. Yeah, and you can't do enough. <laughs> no, and I can't. <laughs> Had you understood grace at all? No, but now I do and I am fully in love with it. And don't you wish the Mormons could, could <sighs> grasp that at all, what both what grace is and what Jesus did for us. Yes, we pray every night to soften people's hearts and let them see. Yeah. Let them f see what grace is and what Jesus has done. Yeah. And just to glorify God. I know God moves in mysterious ways, of course, and um, I don't know if that's biblical or not. I'll have to look that <laughs> up. But, um, you know, some people are affected by the bad news. Mm -hmm. And then find the good news. And that's kind of sounds mm -hmm. like our journey a little bit, mine too. But there are people that open up the Bible and all of a sudden Jesus touches them through, through those words and all they find out is about the good news. Right. Maybe the bad news comes later or something, but we pray for people's hearts to be softened and open their minds. And 
Have you been able to share any of this with your family then? So my family isn't as accepting of it as yeah. Ben's family. Your brothers and sisters, what did you I have? have? I have no siblings, so it's just me and oh. my mom and then my okay. grandparents. I'm really close with my grandparents. Um, okay. Yeah, they, they're having a hard time with it. Are they? We just try not to talk about Don't it. Don't talk about it. That's kind of the way it's we easier that way. with our family. <laughs> just an uh, elephant in the room all the yep. time. But, uh, yeah. And I hope one day they'll see how yeah. happy we are and what God has done for us. And You mentioned praying every night. And have, are your prayers a little different now than oh, they used to be as a they're Mormon? Very different. <laughs> My kids were taught the thing called the popcorn prayer. In church? So in in, at their children's church. Yeah. So my littlest one starts it. She says her little prayer, and then we just move around, and Ben or I will end the prayer every night. But they think it's the funnest thing ever. And they're all participating. Yep, everyone participates in prayer. <laughs> and do you feel like you're talking to to your God, to, to Jesus who sacrificed himself for yes, us? Yes, I feel like we're having a conversation. It's not a yeah. redundant prayer. It's yeah. not a memorized prayer. And do you use the word you and yes instead of thee and thou? Thee and no. thou and yes. We use, we talk to Jesus like we're having a conversation. Well, and he's our friend. He is. I mean, he said we are our, we're his friends. What a joyous message, oh, huh? And the liberty great. and freedom. You feel like you judge people differently now or do you, have you sensed that at all? Pride and what we used to, I used to think of pride, you know, being... So proud that I was living all the commandments and other people weren't. Right. <laughs> do you feel that at all? Um, yeah, I do. Actually, I feel like that I don't, I don't care what other people do. As long as I'm happy with myself and I'm making Jesus happy with me, then that's all I need to do. I don't yeah. care what they're doing over there. Well, we can love them. We can. Yeah. And when we get chances, we share the good news with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, how was the baptism? That was... It was amazing. Did the kids, any of them, get baptized? They did not. Or? We okay. They asked us about it, and we told them when they are ready to follow Christ Isn't fully. Isn't that so different? Mm -hmm. Here we Mormons, f f not force, but encourage kids to get baptized at eight. They're not coming to Jesus. They're no. joining the church. You know? Right. That's what we told them. When you are ready to follow Christ and invite him into your life, then you're welcome to get baptized. But until then, oh, you'll have to wait. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what mommy and daddy are doing, Yep, huh? that's what we did. Did they understand that? We did. We just told them that we are following in Christ's footsteps and we're inviting him to our life and we're just going to build our relationship with him and make him the center of our life. Boy, I wish I'd have... You're so young. I wish <laughs> I'd have had a few more years at this because mm -hmm. I'm, you know, on the tail end of this thing. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I just think my whole life, my kids' life would, lives would have been so different if we'd have had this good news message. Yes. But it's what it is, and that's where we're all at. And hopefully we share with this good message with other, other people as we go along. Well, do you have any questions or thoughts or anything you want to share with your family? Um, I just hope that one day they'll be strong enough to ask. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Like... People know the truth and just ask the question, soften your heart, see who Jesus really is. Yeah. Well, we've started out by asking, saying that if a spouse comes to you, because we have had a lot of families that have split and divided over, over this religious thing, and mm -hmm. you can imagine how tough that is. And I'm grateful my wife, Carla, is, was willing to sit down like you did and mm -hmm. at least have an open heart and be willing to look, and, and she has come to Christ as well. But uh, what would you say to families that might be in a divided mode at this point, where one has uh, found something else, found, the, found Christ? I think you just have to look at for the love that you have for each other and that you b both need to be open-minded and realize that you have different opinions, but you can talk through it and work through it and um, through communication and love, you should be able to make this work. Yeah. And God will be there to help you. He's not going to let you down. Sounds like you and Ben have been able to communicate all the way through this. We have. That's awesome. That's been great. Because, <laughs> yeah, because I, I know that becomes a, par a problem for mm -hmm. many, and the communication just kind of cuts off. When, 
And we need to show love, Christ-like love, even on both sides, whether you're coming out or still hanging on <laughs> to the church for dear life, you know. Um, so anyway, Corey, well, thanks so much for sharing your story. Anything Ben said that you wanted to uh, correct? <laughs> nope, I think he was correct. Oh, he did a good job. He did. Yeah, and you did too. <laughs> Thank so. you. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next time on the Ex-Mormon Files. <laughs>